Hi, everybody. My name is Matthew Pose with Pose Acoustics, and I just got back from London a couple of days ago. Um, many of you got to see a, a small chronicling of the trip. Uh, it was a mixture of a business trip and a personal vacation trip. We like to take at least one big vacation a year if we can as a family. Um, and uh, had a reason to be in London, and so decided why not. Plus, amazingly, as much as, as I never would have believed this, my wife has taught me this since she's from Europe, it is actually often cheaper <laughs> to go vacation in Europe than it is in the U.S. So rather than spending tons of money on flights and hotels to somewhere here, we decided why not go there. Um, London was actually relatively cheap to get into. We did an apartment instead of a hotel, and it was great. Lots of fun. So I should do a whole video that recaps what happened there, and I'll do that later. But I'm going to do questions now. Um, I came home to 10 questions, apparently, that I need to answer, uh, maybe more. This is my wife prints these out for me. So in my video on hidden costs of cheap audio, I ended up getting a question from user ND6ZJ2VJ6L for $10. Hi, Matthew, I have a question that I would like for you to answer for me. Would it be much of a compromise if I was to pull out my in-ceiling CCM663 speakers, he has six of those, and replace them a pair at a time with Perlison R3ICs. I guess to make the same, uh, to make the question for a larger audience, so replacing a pair of speakers primarily for me in ceiling a pair at a time, would that cause insurmountable imbalance in sound quality that my pre-pro could not overcome? I can only afford a pair at a time with my budget. Hopefully you can make sense of this question, Bert. Okay, so I normally don't love to answer questions that are this specific, but this is a good one for everybody. Um, and, and Bert paid $10, so got to answer your question, Bert. Um, but being realistic here, so it's a this is a mixed issue. Um, if you were to take something like a Perlison R3i and a Perlison S3i, most better pre-pros with good correction systems could probably make those speakers sound almost identical. And actually, even without correction, you might have a hard time because they're basically in a similar family, right? It's the same designer, same concept, same dispersion characteristics, just different drivers. And so the sound difference isn't so great. But when you go to something like this Bowers and Wilkins in-ceiling speaker versus the Perlison, the problem you run into is now it's not the same designer. It's not the same dispersion characteristics. It's not the same drivers. And so now there's multiple things that affect our perception of sound quality that are being altered here. Now, remember that room correction systems can only do so much. So they could make the spectral balance at the seated position where the microphone is more similar, but they can't change directivity of speakers. And quite a bit of our perception, even of timbre, comes from a speaker's directivity and not just its frequency response. So making two speakers have a similar in-room measured frequency response does not guarantee that they sound alike. So the first issue I would say with this is that it's, it could create some issues, but you have to weigh that against the benefit of, in the long term of what you're trying to achieve. Now, I think there's also just a, a, a money management piece here that's worth having a discussion about, which is that this idea of buying them a pair at a time really, I think, comes from us, and that this, I'm not picking on you, Bert, this is true of every human being, not wanting to delay gratitude. You want to get the benefits and the good feelings you get from those benefits right away. So rather than put the money away and then carefully save up for enough to replace all six, it's more fun to buy one at a time, one pair at a time, um, and use that as your saving mechanism because then you don't really delay gratitude. It's like a buildup slowly. It might make more sense to just take the money and keep putting it away. Obviously, you have to have good discipline to do that. And not everybody is good at that. It's easier for them just to take some money and spend it and then save up some more money and spend it and not try to save up this much larger amount for all three. And I get that, but you know, you can earn a little interest on it potentially, you know, you could put it in a CD for six months or something and earn, what are they at? Like somewhere between three and 5% right now, probably. Um, and that might add to it. And uh, that might make more sense because I think the core of your question is, is are they going to sound different? And the answer is probably yes. I'm also guessing, but I don't know, that this is your tops. These are not your LCRs. If these are your tops, 
it'll matter, but it may not matter as much because the nature of content that's thrown up there is often a bit different. I've mentioned before that the top should be spectrally balanced. They, have, they should have similar timbre in room to the rest of the speakers. And I believe that that is true because there's been, a, I think, a fundamental change in how speakers are now used in surround sound. Whether it's movies or music, it's not uncommon for stuff to go into the ceiling speakers, those tops, that is of a similar nature to what would go into the rest of the speakers. It's not just about pans and not wanting to hear a shift as things pan up. It's that you've got movies, like I used it because it's an old one, and it's sort of a classic case of where this paradigm shift took place. When Gravity came out, which was one of the first movies done in, it might have been the first. I, 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 in my head, that's what I remember, but you guys are probably going to correct me and say, no, it wasn't the first, it was something else. But in any case, Gravity was the first movie I remember being done in Atmos. And I remember people made a really big deal about George Clooney's voice being in the tops like that. But it's a good example of why the tops need to be good, because George Clooney's voice needs to sound natural. We make such a big deal about anchoring voices with a really good quality center channel that sounds realistic. Right. If the voices are being shifted to other speakers for significant portions of the movie, wouldn't we want those other speakers to be just as good? So my argument has long been that, long been meaning since we've gone to full range speakers and, and changed how we mix movies, Shouldn't all the speakers be good? Does it really make more sense to put so much more money into the LCRs than the rest? And I think that the answer is that makes more it makes sense to put a little bit more into the LCRs because definitely more happens up front. So having extra SPL capabilities, for instance, extra dynamic range um, is good. But having better sound quality, I don't know that that does make sense. I think they all need to sound good and they all need to sound the same too, in terms of the, the spectral balance. The timbre needs to not shift. Um, you want it to be just as natural. EQ can only do so much for that. And so I think the answer to your question is it, it may change things. Now, how much you're going to notice is hard to say, depending on the kind of content you watch, but it may change things and you may find yourself wanting to ultimately just save up and do it all at once. But here's the other side of it. When you're buying these, do you have pre-listens for the LCRs and surround? If the answer is no, and you've got Bowers and Wilkins, then upgrading to this better top may also not make sense because now you've got this much better speaker sitting in the ceiling than you do for the rest. Um, or even if it, I understand some people aren't going to like that comment, even if it's not better per se, because that's very subjective, it's going to sound different. And, and again, that may not make sense. So I think look at it more cohesively as a system as a whole. Think about it in, in those terms. And then in terms of making upgrades, you know, if somebody wants to upgrade the LCRs before the surrounds, I actually think that's not a bad idea. Uh, it helps you, for one thing, you don't invest so much all at once um, before you, you, you know, then you can kind of decide, oh, I like this. This isn't heading in the right direction. Let's do the rest versus this didn't make the change I was expecting. And then you can make a different decision. Do you want to sell them um, and, uh, and go, go a different direction or continue? So anyway, for the surrounds, I, I guess I'm kind of thinking it, I would rather just see somebody save the money up for all of them and do the upgrade all at once. I think at a minimum four, there is some issues still, especially with streaming content where all six aren't being used. And if I recall correctly, typically what happens is it's the middle pair that aren't used in a lot of that stuff. Um, anyway, I know you guys are probably wanting to hear more about my trip, wanting to hear more, I mean, especially the audio side of things. Um, I've got an idea for a video I want to do where I talk about what it means to be an ultimate home theater. I have some directivity ideas I want to talk about. Um, and so we're going to do some more videos on other topics like that as well. But I want to say I really appreciate everybody watching. I know we did like a little, we were, I, we were curious. Do you guys really care about these family trips? I mean, obviously I'm a human being and I have a real life and I have a wife and I have kids and I do things besides this audio stuff. And most of you just know me as the audio nerd that's constantly say, you know, spitting out science uh, related topics on audio. But uh, that isn't my life every day, um, although more than it probably should be. And so... I think um, we had asked, and, and my thought, because this is actually its own psychological lesson, which is that sometimes when you see posts, you think, oh, I guess it's like, you know, 50-50, or maybe the other way around. You think most people, most of you don't want to hear about this. You just want to hear audio. And really what it is, is that some people who have a more negative perception of something are just a louder voice, but they're not actually the majority by any stretch of the imagination. And so doing these surveys help you better understand what the actual quiet majority, you know, the ones who aren't talking about it, they're just enjoying it, really think. And it turned out the vast majority of you did enjoy the extra content. 
there were, I think, an equal number of comments, if not even more so, that said, don't do this. But in terms of um, what you said on the survey, it didn't go that way. So uh, I think we're going to continue to do a mix of things. I've got some ideas for videos, too. I We should do a survey and see what you guys think. So there's this. So David Chen's a, a, a famous chef, and he's got this Netflix show. And I don't remember the name of it, but if you go on Netflix, you'll find it. And Netflix, if you're watching, you owe me some money now. Um, so David Chen has this show. I really like him as a person. Like his character is an interesting person on, on film. Um, I've actually not eaten a lot of his food. I've never eaten at Momofuku, but, um, he's a, he's a professional chef and the stuff he's done is interesting. And he has this show where he has comedians come on and he cooks these themed meals for them. And then they talk while doing it. And I like to cook. And I like to have conversations with AV guys and like sitting in a chair like this with my, with like, you know, Gene De La Sala over here and Michael Stevens over here and just talking to you guys is interesting, but it's not the most interesting. And I thought, wouldn't it be kind of cool if we did a video that was me cooking for them and then they're eating a meal that I'm cooking for them and we're discussing the meal and it's a theme and we're also kind of going into some AV war stories or we're just going into some interesting AV topics while we're doing it. And then it's kind of a more interesting environment for these discussions, um, including, you know, we can be funny sometimes and we have jokes with each other and you don't ever get to see that in videos for the most part. Um, I think many of you probably have an incorrect perception of what my personality is like in real life because what I have to present on these videos is different from what I have to present uh, yeah, I had somebody once say to me that they thought in real life I was probably like the Rain Man, and I, it's like, then they met me, and it's not even close to that. I'm not, I obsess about details. It's what makes me good at what I do for AV, but I'm not like that about every single thing in my life where I get hyper focused on things needing to be a certain way and expressing that in, um, in ways where I like, I can't budge. It's that's not who I am. Um, many of you made jokes and I know it was meant as a joke, but you, I gotta say you offended my wife, um, that like, you couldn't believe my wife looked the way she did. Um, and I was, uh, what, uh, uh, you know, she's too pretty for me or something like that, or my kids were too, too pretty to be mine or something like that. I mean, maybe if you got to know me, you'd realize that, uh, I'm not that person. I can be both. But in any case, uh, I thought that this food idea would be kind of neat. And then I talked to Peter a lot about it and, uh, he, he said he thought it would be cool maybe for him because he likes to cook too. Maybe we both cook a meal together and talk about what we're cooking and use it even as an analogy for some of the AV stuff because we use a chef and quality ingredients analogy a lot to talk about what it takes to do a good theater. So it might actually be something that's uh, got two meanings to it. So anyway, thanks for watching these videos. Thanks for following around. Thanks for commenting. By the way, YouTube sent me an email about having an unusually high number of comments and they really appreciated that and that was something that i got very into when i heard uh, my brother used to work for youtube and he had told me that um, they actually do care about how much interaction there is between video creators and their audience and that those who just ignore their audience and don't have any discussion um, are penalized a little bit in the the way the algorithm looks at the videos versus those who are really interactive because they want it to be more community based. And my channel for the relatively modest number of followers and viewers actually has very, very high comments. Um, I often get as many or more comments as people who have 10 times or 20 times the followers that I do. So thank you very much. I appreciate that. I think that's part of my character and who I am. Um, and I like that you guys do that. So subscribe to the channel, though, so we can get that up because that still helps to get more viewers in here and helps to get the videos out there. And uh, I really appreciate those of you who are doing these. I keep calling them super chats, but that's not right. They're um, something else. I should look this up. I just, somebody asked me yesterday how to do it. Maybe I should do a video on how you do those donations with questions. But anyway, I appreciate the donations. They're really helpful, as I said, to make this worth my while to do more often. I do sometimes have situations where it's like, man, I got to make sure money's coming in from the business. I got to make sure the business is going. And where do I put my time? Do I put my time into you know business development or do I put my time into uh, doing YouTube? And I really like doing YouTube, but sometimes it's hard to justify. And, and as I've said before, those donations make it make sense to put effort into that because then it becomes uh, useful for many reasons and not just because it's good for you guys. It's good for me too. So thanks again. I got more questions coming.